Today, we're going to be learning how to create this particular progress bar or progress circle. I'll teach you both the variations. In your default scene, hit X and delete the default cube, shift A, UV sphere, and control 2 to give it a subdivision surface of level 2. Or you could go to the modifiers tab and add in a subdivision surface and set it to level 2. Now you can go ahead and hit tab to go into edit mode and press G, X, and just move it aside by minus 8 units. And then you can tab back out to go into object mode. What this does is it keeps the origin of the object right at the center. Another method of doing this if you don't want to go into edit mode is just grabbing it on the x-axis by minus eight units and then going to this object over here set origin origin to 3d cursor so those are two different ways of doing the exact same thing now we're gonna have to create an array modifier to create the circle so in order to do that we're just gonna hit shift a empty plane axis and we're gonna rotate the empty about the z-axis by 15 degrees and now we're gonna select our sphere and add in another modifier which is the array modifier and change the relative offset to an object offset and choose the empty for the object offset. Now we can go ahead and just increase the count to 360 divided by 15 to get the right number and in this case 24. So now we can just place the camera where we want it. So let's select the camera, press Alt G, Alt R to clear location and rotation and then you can grab it on the Z axis and just move it up like that. So if you actually press zero to go into the camera view you can see what it looks like. Now we don't require it to be perspective because we don't require depth in this situation so we're going to change it to orthographic and we're just going to go ahead and change the orthographic scale over here just till the entire circle fits in. Similarly, you see because this effect does not require anything else, we can just make it square. So we're going to go ahead and change the resolution to 1080 by 1080 itself. Now if there's too much of space on the sides, Again, just change the orthographic scale to fit your liking, but make sure that we leave a little bit of space so that the bloom can come in. Remember in this tutorial, we're also going to be teaching how you can export transparent bloom as well. So stay tuned for that. Now we can go ahead and set all of our animation defaults. So let's go to the render properties, switch on bloom and go ahead and just in change the intensity to go to something like 0.02. Maybe you can clamp it off at something like 10. We might play around with these later. Then you can go to the output properties, change the frame rate to 30 frames per second, change the end to whatever you require. So I want this to be a one minute animation and it's at 30 frames per second. So I'm going to have to actually go with 30 into 60, which is 1800. The output folder is going to be whichever folder you want it to be. And for the file format, we're going to have to change this a few times. So we'll keep it at FFmpeg video for now, but we'll change the actual encoding while we actually get the output. So now let's go ahead and deal with the colors. So let's just click and drag to create a new material. And all of the animation is going to happen via the actual shader. So let's go to the shader editor hit N to remove the side panel, select our spheres, go to the material properties over here and click new. Now we actually have to play around with this. In the material settings, we're going to go ahead and change the blend mode to alpha blend. We're going to switch off show back face and then we're going to start off by figuring out the colors of the sphere. So let's go ahead and just search for a gradient texture. Place that here. Change from linear to radial so that we have colors going from one side all the way around. So if you actually control shift click with the node wrangler switched on as well as change to the viewport shading of render we can see what this is actually going to look like so right now you see we can't quite see what it looks like so in order to do that we're going to hit control t with the node wrangler switched on or we're going to add in a mapping and texture coordinate nodes just like this and change it from generated to object so once we do that you see we get a nice radial gradient starting from black over here going all the way to white over there now two things first thing we don't want it to start from the side we want it to start from from the top. So in order to do that, we can just change the rotation on the Z by 90 degrees and it shifts over to the top. The next problem is that a circle shouldn't be divided into half. We want the exact junction of these two circles to be right here. So what we'll do is we'll select both the empty as well as the actual circle and then rotate it about the Z. Make sure that we hold shift to get like a really good control and just rotate it till we get it to that particular junction. And we see that we have to rotate it by 7.5 degrees. So we can just type that in and select and now it's perfectly over there. And since we've rotated it by 7.5 degrees, even the texture over here, we have to rotate this by 97.5 instead of 90 because we're adding 7.5. So now we have the junction happening right there. Now let's go ahead and just select the colors. So let's shift these to the side, add in a color ramp and just place that over there and change this black to a nice blue. And let's change this one to a nice green so that we have a nice green to blue transition. Now the next thing is that most of this ends up becoming in that transition range itself. So the first thing I'll do is change it from linear to ease and I'm just going to select this one and make the position 0.15 and I'm also going to select this last bit and change this one's position to 1 minus 0.15 and that gives a really nice gradient. So right now we're just seeing 
what it is. So we can always go to our world settings and place the color down all the way to black as well as disable the light from our renders so that we see just the circles. And then we can place this color into the emission of the principal BSDF and control shift click the principal BSDF so that that goes into the output. The next thing to actually get the bloom is we have to increase the emission strength for the bloom to occur. However, we don't want all of it to be lit which of course you could do if that's what you prefer but i want only the outer rings to actually light up so i'm going to search for a layer weight node and plug the facing into a color ramp and after i plug the facing into the color ramp just control shift click it to see exactly how much is being selected and i like this but i'll just move this up a little bit more go ahead and bring this back and now plug this into the emission strength however this is going to lead to the emission strength having values ranging between zero and one but we want it to go much greater than that so we're gonna search for a math node switch it over to multiply and increase the second value to something high maybe 100 for now and just plug this in between the color ramp and the emission strength and see how much emission is actually occurring now all right it is a little bit too much so we're going to reduce it to maybe 20. great so now that we have this we also want to make sure that the regions in the center of these circles are actually see-through and that's why we had changed it to alpha blend so that we can actually play around with the alpha value over here so we can go ahead and just take this color ramp itself and plug that into the alpha for now and now when you plug that in you'll be able to see that the insides are actually see-through however you can't see that because there is no background for now but we'll go ahead and continue playing with it by actually making the progress come in so the progress actually has to load in so in order to make the progress load in we're going to have to search for another gradient texture which will be set to radial with the same mapping so let's just select the mapping and gradient textures shift d to actually duplicate them and then take the texture coordinates and send the same object coordinates into the mapping and now let's just control shift click the gradient texture to see what it's at right now now if you actually search for a math node and plug it in front keeping it at add itself you'll realize if you start reducing the values below zero it's like the gradient actually changes and it seems like the progress bar is loading so that's exactly what we're going to do we're going to go ahead and make the value minus one initially such that it's completely black and we're going to set a keyframe over here at frame number one and then we're going to go to the last key frame which is frame 1800 and over there we want the entire thing to be become white so in order to do that we're just going to increase the value to zero and hit i now, when we're at zero, there's still this entire gradient that we don't actually want. So to change that, we're just going to search for another math node, switch that from add to power, and we're going to change the exponent and lower it to something like 0.1. So essentially, the larger the exponent, the greater will be this actual fade off. And yes, that is something that you could use if you want it, but I want it to be a really sharp fade off. And that also helps with getting everything to become white except for that absolute last edge. So I think that works best for me. So 0.1 is what I'm going to use. And that makes it perfect. And make sure that this value of zero is also keyframed by pressing I. So once you have the two keyframes, the last thing that you have to do is make sure you go to the timeline, make sure both the keyframes are selected by tapping A and then press T linear and that way you should get a really smooth animation of all of it coming in. Now what we have to do is make sure that this actually goes into our alpha value but we already have an alpha value coming in from this color ramp. So in order to have both the color ramp value and this affect each other we're gonna have to search for a math node, switch it over to multiply and plug this color ramp value in here and the output of the power over here and plug this value into the alpha. Once you've plugged that in, you can control shift click the principal BSDF and you should be able to see the entire circles come in. So right now the alpha does not look like it's actually becoming transparent because if it was transparent, we would have been able to see underneath it. So let's just go back to the materials and make sure that we have everything set properly. Okay, so we have to make sure show back face is checked. Otherwise it is not transparent. So the next thing that we have to do is make this actually shaded smooth because right now you see it's not smooth at all so let's go ahead and shade smooth and there we have the perfect loading symbols so that's how they actually come in and it would eventually load this particular animation will go on till you get all the different colors and the nice transition from green to blue now the next thing is we actually have to get the exact same effect but linear in order to get the linear version, you don't have to make too many changes. The first thing is just select the spheres, shift D, Y to move it down. Forget about how everything's changing. Just go to the modifiers and remove the array modifier. Once you've removed the array modifier, go ahead and just 
add in another array modifier and go ahead and just increase the count to whatever value you want. So I think a value of 10 might be fine. It also has this rotation that we had added in. We don't require that. So Alt R will clear its rotation. Now we have to go ahead and play with the shading. So let's go to the materials and just duplicate the material and this time go to the gradient texture and instead of having it radial just make it linear then play around with the actual rotation value in this case it should be 0 or 180 and once you're done with that when you play the animation you should be able to see it come in in this situation you don't require the power node and all of that for now so let's just go ahead and delete the power node you also don't require the add so let's press x to remove that now when you actually control shift click the gradient texture you can see what it looks like what you can do is simply move it on the x-axis and animate this keyframe to get everything to come into view so let's push it all the way back to beyond your actual circles so let's start off at minus nine then hit i so we have to go back to frame zero and hit i and then go to frame 1800 which is the last frame and just increase the location all the way to the point where all of it comes out so 11 and hit i so once you have that done you can go ahead and plug this into the multiply value over here Control shift click the principal bsdf and you should get the linear variation so if you actually play the animation you should be able to see it come in just as is of course, the gradient has to be changed over here from radial to linear as well, so that the colors also follow a linear pattern, along with changing this to 180. And if you see way too much is green and very little is blue, just play around with the scale on the X and of course the location on the X. So just by playing around with those values, you should be able to get the actual gradient that you want. So 0 0.01. So I think 0 0.05 and the location of 0 0.5 works out fairly well for what I want. So that's how you can create the linear variation of this particular progress bar. However, we won't be looking at the linear version rendering. We'll continue the rest of it with the radial version that we created over here. We have to figure out how we can render this out with the blue. Now, the first problem is that we generally cannot render out blue on transparency. It's technically not possible. All the workarounds have their own issues, but what we're going to do is render it out once with transparency but no blue so the way we're going to do that is go to our outputs and here to actually render transparency we're going to change the container to quicktime and the video codec to this qt animation once you have that set you should get a color option of rgba where a is alpha which should take care of the transparency as well the next thing you need to do is go to your render properties and under film you have to be able to switch on transparent and only then will it actually be transparent the next thing is alpha blend does not work too well with transparency because you see all these pixels that are slightly transparent will all also vanish just as how bloom vanishes all of these also vanish when you have transparency so instead of having it as alpha blend we're going to change it from alpha blend to alpha clip and make sure that you have the object that you want this radial sphere selected when you do this and with that you see how apart from the blue all of that inner region just disappears however we want a little bit more of it to come in so we actually bring this out completely and change the blend a little bit just to add in a little bit more of the color because this is a loading bar we actually want it to be present at least a little bit so that's what it currently looks like and i think that is fine for now so with these settings blend mode of alpha clip a little bit extra showing in and output set to quicktime animation rgba we can go ahead and just render the animation once you've rendered this save this as a file that says base or whatever you want but just change the animation name once you've rendered that out for the next time switch it from rgba to just rgb that way transparency will no longer be there or you can go to film and just switch off transparency and then go ahead and decrease the blending back to what it was and just put this in as it was as well and change the material from alpha clip to alpha blend so just play around with this and render this out once you've rendered this out go ahead and save this video as another name and whenever you're using it in whatever software of your choice for example let's try and use blender itself so let's just add in a new video editing tab so over here we have one of the test animations that i had created just a little portion of it you have to make sure that you change this from actually being a video to changing this to add and in case video editing software does not have the blend mode of add change it to lighten both of those are going to give you fairly similar results but in order to actually see it work you need something underneath so let's just place this 
up and underneath it add in another image or video just added in a thumbnail for a previous video of mine and now you can actually see how we actually get this bloom effect by having this set to add it is transparent but it's there you can go ahead and just change the transform so let's just put this up a bit scale it down and here you have an actual transparent video with bloom however this still has its own problem which is in a few regions like this where since it's just add it gets ignored when there's very bright values at the back so in order to make sure that it's always seen we go ahead and add in the other version underneath it so we grab this move it up and we add in the version with transparency so remember the one without transparency the one that we set to rgb that had the bloom and everything on it has a black background and has to be set to the blend mode of add when putting it onto your video. The other one has to be set as just a normal video with the transparent background placed on top. You'll also notice that sometimes you'll have situations like this where the bloom is just so much that it comes out to the edge and that causes the issue as you can see over here where you can clearly see this video. So to actually change that, again, in our layout, make sure that when you have it, the bloom is actually clamped to certain values. The intensity is also fairly low and wherever it goes, the bloom should not reach the edge so in this case also it is almost reaching the edge so i'm just gonna have to select our camera and just increase the orthographic scale so that it's completely out so with that you can render out both the versions and actually use it as an alpha over if you have any questions regarding the blend mode version of exactly how to use it do let me know and i'll create a separate tutorial on just that so until next time don't forget to stay creative